Mark, Mark is well known because he interprets, he interprets, I guess, conventional new technology to uh, the masses, uh, but also has promised to show us some of the latest tchotchkes. So it's Thank great to have much. you here. Thank you, Moses. And it's uh, an honor, a privilege to be here, especially with such esteemed company. And, and thank you very much for your time. We don't have a lot of it, well, for me anyhow. So I want to uh, dive right in. And uh, I'm calling this Tech It Out. And this is sort of a lighthearted look at what's available and relatively affordable today. Tools, and that's really what gadgets are, right? Smartphones and tablets and accessories. These are tools. Uh, to, to, to help improve your life, improve the quality of your life, give you information that can be very useful to you, uh, and, and, and some aids that can track your activity and ways to monitor and, and see it, and, and of course, gather more information. So uh, instead of, you know, we call this sort of the digital health industry, um, and I don't mean biomed, as uh, Alex talked about in depth, but uh, more, you know, consumer tools that are available for health and wellness. Um, uh, as, as Moses says, my bio's in, the, in there, so I don't want to spend much time about who I am, but you know, it says on my business card I'm, I'm a technology evangelist, but I'll, I'll change that to technology translator. Um, my, my, whether I'm writing articles for the likes of AARP or Costco or MSN or USA Today, or whether I'm doing TV work with CNN or at the movie theaters with Cineplex, my whole thing is breaking down geek speak into street speak, making sense of this very overwhelming and intimidating uh, sort of techno technological age that we're in. So I think the biggest trend that we've seen over the last couple of years, I'll call it mega mobility. This is the migration from a computer at home to devices that we carry on us that can do almost, if not everything, that a, a home-based uh, computer can do, if not more. Your smartphone or your tablet, for example, can shoot high-definition video. It's got integrated uh, chips like GPS that, that are, makes these devices location-aware. You know, I can say to my iPhone, when I get home, remind me to call my mom. And my, because my phone knows where it is, geographically speaking, uh, it, it won't remind me until I pull into my driveway to call my mom. And I'm referring to Siri, by the way, the voice-to-text uh, technology built into many of Apple's products. Um, so smartphones and tablets are sort of the most exciting thing that's happened over the last couple of years. And then there's this new trend that sort of combines the two, and they're often referred to as phablets, half phone, half tablets. Uh, case in point, this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. It's a 5.7-inch smartphone. And, and I want to emphasize the word smart. There's a lot of technology under the hood here. In fact, I was showing uh, somebody backstage in the green room that this device, can you can read articles just using your eyes. You don't have to flip with your fingers anymore. So imagine if there's someone in your life that has dexterity problems or even simply taking the, the go train or the, the subway to work, you can, hold the, you, know, you can hold the pole and just with your eyes go up and down and read the text. It actually moves while you look with your eyes. So they're getting smarter and smarter and excellent for uh, accessibility uh, issues as well. So that's definitely where we're talk what we're talking about. These are, for, these are computers, make no mistake. Smartphones and tablets are computers in a super thin and light form factor that lets you do a number of things while on the go. We have an increasingly mobile culture, regardless of your age group, and this lets you stay connected. It's your lifeline to the world with those who matter and the information that matters to you. So one of the most exciting things, I call this a sort of a digital health talk, and, and it, this is an industry, by the way, that's expected to grow by 40%. By 2016, it's going to be a $6 billion industry, largely dominated by devices like these. These are fitness accessories that wirelessly communicate with your mobile device, or in many cases, you can plug it into a traditional computer. And the idea is pretty much the same, such as this... Um, Nike fuel band that I've got on my wrist here, which you can see in the middle. Uh, these devices can track your movement throughout the day. So they've got built-in technology like accelerometers. Uh, they've got like a pedometer that counts your steps, uh, an altimeter that can track whether you're going up or down stairs, and show you this information visually in an app or application on the smartphone or tablet or at home on the PC. And again, information is paramount. That's what we're talking about here. Seeing this information, your activity throughout the day can provide incentive for you. You know, we all can 
you know, use a little kick in the butt to get, to get active. And this lets you see in graph or chart form how you're doing and help you monitor and set goals for yourself and even get rewarded for doing so. So a couple here in the top left is the Fitbit. That's the Flex. There's some, a few different other models. I and mean, we're talking about sub $100 devices here. Um, some pedometers are also like the clip-on type that lets you wirelessly communicate with your mobile devices. Uh, and um, again, we're all talking about what you do after you spend your day walking around. So once you have that information, the idea is that you can easily see it. Um, my wife, who, by the way, is a fitness instructor who likes these kinds of tools because it helps her out, um, we went for a walk the other day. And when I got home and my, uh, my Nike Fuel Band uh, wirelessly jumped onto my uh, Wi-Fi network, I got a reward on my computer. It had a big badge that said, congratulations, you walked 8,000 steps today. That's a record. And I got like a little trophy. And you know, this is really exciting. You know, This is the kind of incentive that I need. I review video games for a living. So that dangling carrot works for me. So again, the idea is that you can see how many steps you've taken, how many calories you've burned. In some cases, they can monitor your heart rate uh, and, and so on. And I'll show you a device in a moment that can also monitor your blood pressure. The idea is that it's visible. It's meaningful. You can bring this information to your physician. You can wirelessly send it to, to them. Some of these devices, like the Fitbit, can also help track your sleep. How often did you get up during the night and for how long? And it'll show you all of that in graph form. On the Fitbit, by the way, you just tap three times to go from a day mode to night mode. You wear it while you sleep. It even has, because it's got built-in uh, tactile stimulation, it vibrates, you can even set it as an alarm so you don't disturb your significant other. These devices are getting super smart. So here's where you can see how well you slept. And then, more importantly, what can you do with that information? And here's where I was talking about um, gaming as uh, the trend is called gamification. When you've got sort of goals and challenges and rewards for your, for your progress, this is uh, an example of a product called Strive, S-T-R-I-I-V, that when you walk and you start, you, you do burn off calories and you do have, it calculates all your steps and all that, it, it translates to virtual gold. So a currency that you can spend in a game that wirelessly works on smartphones and tablets. Again, providing some extra incentive for you to stay fit and motivated. And in some cases, this information, which helps you motivate uh, yourself, is to share this information via social media, like Facebook and Twitter. It's not for everyone, but if you can broadcast how you're doing, how, much, how many pounds you've lost, or you know, how many more steps you've taken, it can help give you that, that pressure that you might need to continue your, your progress. There are also apps uh, available for smartphones. And again, apps are just software. It's just programs. That's the slick term for them that you download. They're very inexpensive. They're free or close to it. That can also track your progress. Keep in mind, a lot of phones have built-in pedometers and accelerometers and all those same tools. It's just a little bit more cumbersome to bring a, sm a smartphone with you instead of a small wearable device. But there are plenty of apps that, you, that will track what you're eating. Sometimes you manually need to type it in, you know, and it'll, you know, you can set a goal. Like I want to lose, you know, five pounds in three weeks. So it'll tell you what your daily caloric intake should be. Um, and then you can type, you know, I had a medium bowl of Kraft macaroni and cheese, and it'll tell you what that, uh, you know, how many, uh, it'll know built with its built-in database, how many calories is there and what you're allowed to, what you're allowed to consume to keep going. Um, there's also lots of accessories for mobile devices that uh, can help you uh, not just stay fit, but stay healthy. Uh, you may have seen this product from Wythings, a French digital health company. This is a, uh, a mobile blood pressure monitor. So instead of going to your doctor's office or to your local you know, shopper's drug mart or what have you, this just plugs into your smartphone or tablet, and you can take uh, what is considered an accurate reading. I'm not a physician, but a, a relatively accurate reading on your blood pressure uh, status, as well as your heart rate and other information all being plugged uh, into the device itself. So anywhere, anytime, at the cottage, on a park bench, you can bring this kind of stuff with you. And it's getting smaller and smaller all the time. I was talking with Alex earlier about these high-tech wristbands, like the, the, the fuel band, that, that can also, in some cases, measure your, your heart rate and, and give you some information there. So they're getting smaller. This is a blood glucose monitor, again, built into uh, a small device that can plug into a smartphone or a tablet. Um, uh, I've got it in my home I haven't reviewed yet. I've got a breathalyzer. 
for smartphones and tablets, for uh, those who may be inclined to uh, drinking and driving. This is the kind of thing that uh, I'm not sure exactly how you're going to remember to, or you know, you're going to have to have a, a, a significant spout, you know, a significant other who's going to force you to, to uh, breathe into it. But this, these kinds of things will give you more information. There are apps for all kinds of diseases, disorders, uh, conditions. This is an, uh, a very a uh, very good uh, Canadian-made epilepsy app called eAction Info. Again, the, the idea is that you've got information with you wherever and whenever on virtually any device. Uh, here's one for uh, caregivers for Alzheimer's patients. Again, the idea is that you can track information on it, wirelessly send it to a physician, um, and, and see information all written out. So there are lots of really affordable, if not free apps, that can um, help you out. This is, again, using the GPS of your device, locate a loved one, or you broadcast where you are. Um, I had a grandfather who had uh, Alzheimer's, and he was a wanderer. This is the kind of thing that could, could, could really help out. And there's countless stories of that. Uh, this is one of my favorite apps to staying fit. Before we move on to some other uh, technologies, this is called Zombies Run. And not to be confused with the zombie run that's taking place on Sunday in Toronto, this is an app that tells you, it's kind of like those old radio shows from the 40s. It's like a play, you know, like the uh, Inner Sanctum and the, uh, the Shadow, if anybody remembers that. But it's a, it's a story that uses the GPS in your phone, and it keeps you motivated while you're exercising. And it tells you a scary story about a post-apocalyptic future in which zombies are chasing you. So talk about motivation. This is, uh, you know, in the app, you're hearing this tale while you're exercising and you're picking up, you know, supplies for survivors and you're staying on the go. So again, whatever it is that can incense you, whether it's the gamification part, the sharing or the social media angle, or just plain seeing this information in chart or graph form is going to help give you the incentive you need to stay fit and motivated. Uh, so again, this one's called Zombies Run. It's available for all uh, different platforms. Platform. So that's a cute uh, product right there. Again, the, you know, you've heard the expression, there's an app for that. There's a million apps now available at the Apple App Store and a million apps at the Google Play Store and many hundreds of thousands between Windows and BlackBerry, the other two big players. Um, yeah, those are what the stores look like. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. So digital health and this whole trend as, as with technology as a tool to help you know, better track your, your progress and show you information. It's, it's not limited to mobility. Uh, there are a lot of tools in the home as well. On the left is a scale that uh, is a Wi-Fi scale that not only measures your BMI, your body mass index, but your weight, and, but it wirelessly sends it to a password-protected website. So again, it helps you track if you set some goals for yourself, some weight loss. So instead of guessing, like, yeah, I think my genes are a little bit looser, this gives you concrete information. There is a feature to have your weight broadcasted on Twitter, that's not my thing, uh, but that, that is available. So that's the why things, uh, the same company, by the way, that makes the um, blood pressure monitor. Uh, this is a video game from Ubisoft. Uh, they have uh, studios in Montreal, Quebec City, Vancouver, and Toronto. And they make uh, games, this is the, the fitness, bunch of fitness games that uses the camera built into uh, the Xbox video game console uh, that monitors your body, your face, your voice, and allows you to exercise in front of the TV. And this gives you a virtual trainer that tells you how you're doing. It'll call out if you're not doing it correctly, if you're not doing those moves right. The, the, the voice will say, no, no, keep, try again, you're not doing... So it's like you know, having a virtual trainer in your home with you. And a lot of people are more comfortable working out by themselves in front of their TV than in a fitness environment like at a health club. Again, this is the Kinect sensor. It's optional with the existing Xbox, but with the new machine coming out next month called Xbox One, it's going to be integrated with it. Again, this is a declassified military technology from Israel, by the way, that, uh, again, tr tracks your, your body. The new sensor is even smarter, but they're using a lot of... There's a lot of fitness applications. You've probably heard of the we, we Fit and all that, so this is sort of the evolution of that. Without having to hold anything, you are the controller. It's also built into TVs. Uh, this is a Samsung Smart TV. Cameras pop up. So yes, you can Skype with your loved ones overseas. TVs are also becoming computers. Um, but there's also the ability to use gestures and voice commands to control content. Great for those with, again, who need some accessibility aids or those who just want to conveniently be able to access what they want, these cameras are built in. The, the day my wife and I set up this camera in the summer, we, my, my son paused excuse me, a show he was watching, and when he walked away, the, ca the TV yelled out a few moments later, do you want to turn me off? <laughs> and it was like, oh, wow. <laughs> 
I've, heard, I've been asked to be turned on, but not off, but anyways. So uh, and it's, it knew that nobody was watching. So even from an environmental perspective, that's very smart, right? That's a, you know, there's something called vampire power, Halloween's around the corner, where 25% of your, your gadget's electricity is still being consumed even when they're turned off, which is pretty smart. So this is pretty neat. So that's built into the new Samsung uh, smart TV. So a lot of the art, articles that I've written in the past, especially for AARP, the, the magazine, and, and their website in the States, is devoted to aging in place. So often a phrase used to living longer independently at home in your own comfortable environment. Uh, there's different fra words for it. The aging in place is the one that we often use. And some of this uh, would just be a refresher for you because they've been around for a while and some of this might be new news, but there's still a lot of uh, development here. Um, there's the you know, wearable um, sort of uh, 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 emergency monitors. Sometimes they're uh, a pendant like this. Sometimes they're a wristband. You've all seen the commercials, Help I Fall and I Can't Get Up, that kind of stuff. So that's still happening and getting more and more innovative, a lot smaller, a lot more wearable, um, you know, lots of choices out there, a lot more affordable for those loved ones that you have uh, who uh, want to remain independent longer. Uh, you know, my grandmother, again, anecdotally, you know, she lived to 93, but when, you know, she was in her late 80s, she fell and she couldn't reach the phone, and that really sort of signaled the, the beginning of the end for her, unfortunately. There's lots of other tools here. Uh, telehealth is sometimes the phrase thrown around where, you, you know, with video chatting and, and, and uh, wireless internet, you can communicate with physicians elsewhere. So this is uh, some of the devices here to, to keep you... Uh, Keep you, you know, again, measuring your blood pressure and all that. Uh, this is a, a pill reminder uh, for those that suffer from some dementia uh, issues. Again, video conferencing with consent. That's the important thing. With consent, you can video, have an open video chat always with your loved ones. Um, and then this is kind of interesting. These are the new breed of sensors for the home that could uh, tell a loved one or a caregiver remotely what that person is doing at home or what they're not doing. So for example, if the fridge hasn't been opened in eight hours or less, you know, obviously you set the parameters, you could be notified on your mobile device that your mom or dad hasn't opened the fridge in a while if they're suffering from you know, some sort of uh, uh, problem. So you could know that. Or if they haven't left their bedroom by 9 a.m. and you know they're an early riser, then you also can be signaled. So whether the sensor picks something up and alerts you or doesn't pick something up, you can put these on fridges Pill, uh, med medical cabinets, uh, medicine cabinets, and all that. So that's also something you're going to see a lot more of. And then you place them around the home. Every situation is different. It's often a combination of sensors and cameras and whatnot. Um, so before I wrap up, and I actually do have a little bit more of a show and tell for you, um, I wanted to also just take a little peek into the future. Um, this uh, wearable technology is going to be a buzzword you're going to hear a lot more of going forward. Next year, we've got the Google Glass uh, um, wearable computer. These look like eyeglasses, but without the lenses. You could put prescription lenses if you want, but it's got a small screen hovering over the right eye that will give you information while you're on the go. So you've, we've all seen people walking down the street like this who are texting and falling down manholes. Well, now the idea is that you can access information by speaking. Again, we're moving from mouse and keyboard and typing to voice and gestures uh, as an interface. Uh, you're going to be able to access information on the go. There are smart watches. Sony and Samsung and Pebble are the big three right now. But again, the idea is that more information you've got at a glance, uh, the, the better. I know on one hand you can say, well, how lazy can you get that you can't take your phone out of your pocket to see who's texting you? But again, it's all about convenience. And there's going to be a, multiple, a, a, a myriad of screens in our lives that all wirelessly communicate. So that's going to be a trend that's going to continue. And then a little bit more down the road is robotics. And I've told uh, my kids, who are still quite young, that this is a field they really should be considering. Um, you know, I may disagree with Bill Gates that everybody will have a robot by 2025. I think that's a bit ambitious, but without question, there's been a lot of advantages advancements in uh, domestic robots that can help people at home, again, living longer independently. They're going to start adding more artificial intelligence to it. It'll remind you of things, and it'll have more personality, and that's coming. So very cool stuff. Uh, on the horizon, uh, robots. Um, the University of Berlin this summer successfully created a robot that uh, cooked breakfast and cleaned up afterwards. So I'm personally excited about that. Uh, before we wrap up, there's a few other tools. And again, we're talking about tools again. These are gadgets that you may not have seen yet. This is a, uh, for those who have trouble typing on a smartphone because, you know, it's so, so small, this is a little gadget about the size of a pack of Tic Tacs that you can pull out at your local, uh, you know, Timmy's, put it on a table, and it wirelessly beams a virtual keyboard onto the table or desk in front of you. 
and it, it uses Bluetooth technology to wirelessly tether to your smartphone. So sorry about that. I see the camera's on me now. Um, so you put this on the table, and you type as if it was a full-size QWERTY keyboard. And, it, and the words just appear in your smartphone or tablet. So this is uh, a CTX Technologies, a Toronto-based company, $99 and it's called the VK200, not the sexiest of names, but uh, it's, it's a keychain fob, so pretty cool. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? My bag of tricks before I kicked off the stage. This is the Cobra, tra Cobra Tag. These are devices that, you, these are little devices that you can put on your luggage, your purse, your car keys, and then you open your smartphone or tablet and it makes it chime. So if you've ever lost anything, they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, these kinds of things. You put them on everything and then you can make them ring very, <laughs> make it ring very loudly when you've misplaced it. Or the other way around, if you've misplaced your smartphone, you press a button on the Cobra Tag and it makes your smartphone ring. So pretty smart. And then finally, I'll wrap up with this. This is a pen, a smart pen. Again, everything's got the word smart in front of it, uh, called the Sky Wi-Fi Smart Pen. And uh, what this device does from a company called Livescribe is that it marries old school technology with the digital world. Whatever you write on paper uh, is um, not only uploaded to a password protected uh, website for you, but it also transcribes your ch chicken scratch into text. So imagine a student writing notes f you know, uh, feverishly in a lecture all those words are not only wirelessly uploaded to a, an app, and this works with smartphones as, as well as computers and tablets, but it also transcribes it into text for you. This falls into the, why didn't they have this when I was in school category? Yeah. <laughs> and this is $100 as well. Well, there you have it. I'm over my time, but thank you very much for having me. Thank you. So, uh I imagine the best part of your job is you get all of these chachkis for free, right? It's a nice perk. Yeah? I sure do. Yeah. A FedEx is at our house about 10 times a day the with <laughs> video games and gadgets, so my kids think it's pretty all swell. Right. Yeah. So we've got to drop by next time you're doing <laughs> That's a little sale. My address sale. is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, garage sale. All right. Thanks Thank so much, Mark. That Thank was great. Thank you very much. Thank you.